and they haven't been able to use their jail facility since 2017, and actually this is part of the reason why. Now this is the life vest that I usually wear when I go kayaking or if I decide to float on the Yakima River. As you can kind of see behind me, there is white and that's white everywhere. There is fog, there, it's very windy. 30% of crash fatalities in Washington are due to distracted driving. So next time you get in your vehicle, make sure you put your phone down before you start your car. I think I'm ready. When training for a real fire, firefighters put on all their gear to make sure they're capable of the real thing. Now this is just an extra 50 pounds that firefighters do have to add on to make sure that all of their skin is covered in order to safely go into the fire and protect themselves. Pastor Shane hopes every time he comes out and blesses the land with water and this branch following a tragic shooting, he never has to do that again. That's why he's calling on Congress to make a change. And now that we're officially in the summer season, we are starting to see those temperatures outside increase. Stacy, what should we expect this weekend? Tonight, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife announces a change in the fishing rule starting today. An award-winning children book author is making appearances across the country to read her book to students and families. I was about to uh, tell our viewers <laughs> that. <laughs> you beat me to the point. <laughs> you know, another really cheap way to save money yeah. At Christmas time, just exchange glances instead of gifts <laughs> with your family members. I'm exchanging a glance with you right now. <laughs> Good morning, Jessica. Now, I do love cooling off in the water, especially with those really high temperatures that we're expecting this week. And if you do plan on floating the Yakima River, Kittitas County Fire and Rescue tell me that these rivers can be really unpredictable and can be dangerous. And you never know what kind of conditions could be just around the river bend. You cannot predict what is around the corner on a river. If you grew up in central or eastern Washington, floating the river during the summer is a must. We're all going to be on floats and rafts, and we plan on, uh, you know, tying us up tying ourselves up all together so that we don't get lost. But rivers can also be unpredictable. We're just asking people to avoid getting into trouble in the first place. That's why safety is extremely important. Deputy Fire Chief Rich Elliott from Kittitas County Fire and Rescue tells me a lot of the times alcohol and dehydration have a lot to do with bad accidents on the river. We can't expect people not to you know, drink some alcohol, but uh, don't drink to the point where you're under the influence. When speaking with Nainan Wheatley, the owner of Real Adventures and Raft Gear Rentals in Kittitas County, she tells me in her 20 plus years in business, she has seen some bad accidents because of lack of safety. We had one group um, that took a boat actually to the Natchez, and they came around a corner and hit a log jam and had a very serious accident. Thankfully, everybody survived, but somebody was in the hospital about uh, seven days. That's why Nainan and Deputy Fire Chief Elliott stresses the importance of wearing life vests when on moving water. The jacket is like a seatbelt in a car. The chances are you're not going to have an accident, right? But if you have an accident, if you don't have your vest on or your seatbelt in your car, you're more likely to get injured or worse. We end up seeing five or six uh, water related rescues on a typical year and, you know, two to four drownings uh, a year is is fairly common for us. When putting your life vest on, you always want to make sure you're wearing it properly. You're going to want to make sure that this is snug like a rubber band when you're pulling on it. And you could also have that football test. Now, can you do the football test on me? Now the football test or touchdown test is making sure that your life vest doesn't move when you put your hands up. There you go. Nice and snug. <laughs> and if you don't know how to swim, do not go in the river. Being out there without a life vest on and not knowing how to swim, you know, in these conditions is a recipe for disaster. Now this is the life vest that I usually wear when I go kayaking or if I decide to float on the Yakima River. Now this life vest, I do try to wear as tight as possible like I showed you in the story. And you want to make sure that you're wearing this just like a seatbelt because that can help save your life. This is an adult issue that our students should not have to be dealing with and they are. The Toppenish High School Cerna investigation, which looked into married couple Johnny and Bertha Cerna, the former vice principal and secondary English teacher at Toppenish High School, has been closed by the Yakima County Sheriff's Office. The two were accused of providing drugs and alcohol to minors, as well as having sexual relationships with minors. We had difficulty talking to um, basically anyone from the school district. 
A heated school board meeting was held on February 15th following the cold investigation. They, being the people of power choosing to prioritize partying, escapism, nepotism, abuse, and debauchery over education. Please don't you let need our to children sit. Think Your time is to they are a number you need for to sit. They are sacred. We are sacred. Not ships to be sought, or balls to be caught, kicked, or dumped, or chipped. Many people in the community have been openly complaining about the way the school board handled the investigation. There have been things that have happened over the past that created the atmosphere and culture in which they were able to do what they did. In a previous phone call earlier in February, Yakima County Prosecutor Joe Brusick told me that he had sent back the Cerner case to Yakima Sheriff's Office for further investigation. The prosecutor would like us to do some more investigation in order for him to charge. Uh, at this time, he declined to make any uh, charges. Detective Reyna talked with his supervisor and uh, realizing that there's a difficulty that the people that the prosecutor's office wants us to talk to um, are unwilling to talk to uh, law enforcement. Since the lead detective has now decided to close the case, I have tried to follow up with the prosecutor, but he did not return my numerous calls. And many people in the Toppenish School District tell me that they don't want to speak because of fear. I am scared for my job. We're scared of retaliation. Yeah. It did make me feel a little unsafe because it's like they weren't doing anything about it. And it's also worse that it, it sort of, it just ruined our school's reputation because now that's all people think about when they think Toppenish, oh, that those two teachers with all these allegations and they still were on the school board for, or the staff for so long. So now many people are turning to the board asking John Cerna Sr., Johnny's father, to step down as superintendent. I would like to see Mr. Cerna step down. Um, I don't know that he needs to be fired, but I think if he refuses to step down, the board should insist that he does. The Yakima Sheriff's Office says they cannot move forward with the investigation if other victims will not talk to them. So for now, the investigation is closed. If you would like to reach out to the Yakima Sheriff's Office, you can find their information on our website at NBCRightNow.com. In Yakima for NBC Right Now, I'm Sophia Lesios. It's exactly what our community needs uh, and, and you know what all communities need that are struggling with violence. The Yakima School District, just like other school districts around the nation, struggled with student attendance during the peak of the pandemic. In a regular school year, historically, the Yakima School District averages about 75% of regular attendance. That's missing around two days a month in the school year. There were times when we um, had really low attendance, and that was not uncommon in the nation. The school district told me that many of the reasons students had low attendance wasn't necessarily their fault. So the economic impact of COVID, um, it, it required a lot of our older students to work, care for families, you know, if they needed to care for younger siblings or elders or multi-generational families. Another reason might have been because of traumatic experience. In the city of Yakima, 35% of all calls Yakima Police Department get are domestic violence. We were noticing a connection between many of the children experiencing these um, traumatic events and lack of attendance. The school district now has partnered with the Yakima Police Department and other entities in Yakima to address this issue. Something unique YPD decided to start using this school year is called Handled with Care. It's a way for the police when they encounter a child that's experienced a traumatic event within their home to notify the school district. This is a way as a community, Yakima is trying to not only have a positive impact in the moment, but prevent traumatic experiences for children to affect them systemically. We're trying to intervene early at the onset of an issue so that 20 years down the road, we, you know, that person has everything they need to be successful in life. Now the Yakima School District is trying to put in extra effort into the attendance for students. So they created their re-engagement task force where multiple agencies come together to discuss ways to help students. Nationwide, you look at districts that um, have a higher rate of attendance in spite of challenges. It's a citywide effort. It's not just a school district that does it. It really has to be the city that gets involved. Members of the Yakima Association Faith-Based Communities hosted a blessing here in Millennia Plaza, trying to bring awareness to gun violence and the mass shootings that affected many across the nation. When these events happen, 
it just you know brings back all the pain I've gone through. And this is so needless. It is so absurdly needless. 18 mass shootings took place across the nation since the Uvalde, Texas shooting on May 24th. This is according to Gun Violence Archive, a nonprofit organization. Several of these shootings occurred at parties and on Memorial Day. This should not be happening. I don't have the solutions, but let, let's dialogue. Let, let's expand, let's debate, let's learn and grow. The Yakima Association of Faith Communities came out to give a blessing to the land and to those that have been affected by the Uvalde shooting, which killed 21 people, 19 of them children, and the mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, where a teenage gunman drove over 200 miles to a supermarket and fired over 50 shots, killing 10 people in what police are calling a hate crime attack. One man said seeing the deaths of so many children reminded him of the loss of his own child. The reason we hurt so much it's because, because we loved our children so much. That's the pain. And, and that will last because their love lasts with them. But now more than ever, people are saying enough is enough. Prayers and thoughts are not enough. We actually have to take action. Many of the members had different takes on how to move forward in the wake of gun violence. We need help for those who have um, thoughts of violence in their hearts and to reach those so that they're, they can deal with the anger and the hurt that's within them. Sell them. That's fine. But have the government require you pay a tax, a heavy tax. You've got to go through all these other loops. You can have all the guns you want, but you have to go through these steps. We are not going to outlaw guns, and I don't think we should. But I think we need to have civil discussion of how do we protect one another? How do we have dialogue and learn from one another? Pastor Shane hopes every time he comes out and blesses the land with water and this branch following a tragic shooting, he never has to do that again. That's why he's calling on Congress to make a change. In Yakima for NBC Right Now, I'm Sophia Lesios.